What's going on, guys? Um, so, we've got a clan war tonight against uh, Sky the Esports. Lineup is one diamond and three masters. Um, we are getting the first game set up right now. Uh, waiting on their player to join in. Looks like he just just joined. Gemini. He's good. He's really good. So I'm not sure who they're going to use first, but he's the one that joined in. Once we get their player in, we'll still have to do vetoes, so it might be a moment before we get started. It's a uh, best of seven, four versus four. Guys, let me know if the audio is good. Let me put on some of the music. Let me know if the audio is good um, in game, because sometimes the game volume is too loud and it drowns out my voice or, you know, whatever. Any audio levels that you might be experiencing, please let me know. Just waiting on one more player to join in. Hey, what's up, Zeno? What's going on, man? Sorry about the downtime. We're just waiting on their player to join in. Should be any moment now.
let's see their lineup. They're using Gemini, which is um, like basically GM. Very scary opponent. And then we've got Daydreamer. He's 5K. I think we can. I think we can pull something out here. We don't have the strongest lineup tonight, but, you know, you, you got to have faith, man. I believe. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got our first player. Gonna get vetoes underway. Oh, Groovy Man too, he's really good. Wow, they got, they got two basically GMs oh we do have faith in the lineup that's right <laughs> what's up groovy thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by in the stream good luck and have fun yep just getting vetoes underway now so should be into our first game any minute now. All right, we've got our first map. It's gonna be on Catalyst. Alright, so Daydreamer is 5k. Sippy Cup is not too far behind him, 4. Point, or 4.8k. So, could be a pretty fair game. Fair match, I believe. Depending on, you know, which matchups they're doing good in. Could be in for a very good game. Oh, you got some Chinese people in the chat. What's up, man? I don't I don't understand Chinese, but hello, greetings. Thank you for checking out the stream. Game number one in this best of seven. <laughs> 
All right, in the top left-hand corner, we have the teal-colored Protoss. His name is Daydreamer from Sky the Sports. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, the red Protoss from Psionic Aftermath, Sippy Cup. So, whoa, what happened? Okay, my bad. Um, Protoss versus Protoss. On a relatively small map, this should be interesting. So already we've got some variances in the builds. Um, okay, we've got some four pylons inside the base. Oh, I didn't even notice. Uh, yeah, Daydreamer's going for a cannon rush. He's already got a forge done, and the pylons are, are finishing. Let's see. Um, Sippy Cup is getting his second gateway and some gas, but uh, okay. And he's starting a cyber core as well. Oh man, this is looking grim. Cybercore is just now finishing. Wow. All right. Well, quick game number one. Yeah, man. Cannon rushes are so hard to deal with. You got to be very careful. And it's like you got to act fast and, um, you know, quick decision making and stuff because one slip up and you could just lose the game just like that. So our next player will be John, a Terran player, and he has picked Acid Plant for game number two. Got the overlay, but back into the game anyway, so. Alright, game number two. Sky is up one to zero. Alright, in the spawning in the top left hand corner, we have the new contender coming out of Psionic Aftermath. The Blue Terran, his name is John. And in the bottom right hand corner we have the teal colored Protoss currently up one game for his team. His name is Daydreamer. So we've got a Terran vs Protoss this game. Don't think we'll be seeing a cannon rush out of Daydreamer this time. Gateway goes down. like uh, uh, you're talking about the uh, the title yeah uh, I mean I was just using um, I was just using the abbreviations wait uh, what 
Did the title not update? Okay, yeah. I was just using the abbreviations. I can change it if you want me to. All right, so we've got a Nexus going down for Daydreamer. Um, so far, we had a Rax first into Gas, uh, Reaper expand from the Terran. Second gas, as long uh, as well as a cyber core, about to be finished here for Daydreamer. Reaper is on the way across the map. Sneaky little probe getting out over here. I don't think John knows where uh, where that probe went off to. Stalker being chrono boosted out, so he should be able to deal with this Reaper without taking any damage. Might get one probe kill if he really commits, but he'll risk losing that Reaper just like that. Uh, yeah, I think it's gone. He did get a, a decent scout off, though. Saw the second gas was already being taken. I don't believe he saw the Twilight Council. Let's check. Oh, okay, he did see the Twilight Council, too, so that's good for him. Uh, looks like he's going for a 2-1-1 build so far. Wow, this probe has gotten back in, and he's going to delay the command center and get a scout off on the second barracks. So these are really big things for him. I believe, is John AFK? He's not building anything. Yeah, I think John's AFK. Or, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's definitely AFK. So we'll try and get a regame. I don't know what happened there, but. I guess his internet died, so. That's all right. We'll just do a regame, remake it. Alright, so going to try game number two again. Hopefully John's internet will survive the whole game. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's Eastern again. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, uh, you guys saw it on the options. I had Central's uh, selected, so I don't know. Blizzard's just being weird. But, um, so yeah, top left-hand corner this time. They've actually switched positions. The Teal Protoss, his name is Daydreamer from Sky Esports. The bottom right is the Blue Terran from Psionic Aftermath. His name is John. Looks like both players are going for the exact same thing they were going for last game, which is to be expected. Scythe? Is that how you pronounce it? Scythe, right? Did I say it wrong or something? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. Sivy. <laughs> So his probe is being very annoying. He might actually get this SCV. Oh, just barely saves it. Reaper's about to come out, so he'll have to run away. Oh, it's... Oh, I see. Scythe. The sea is silent. So there's no k sound. It's like sky. It's not scythe. It's just... Scythe? I see. All right, all right. The Reaper is across the map, and the probe comes back in. Well, it looks like he did get one Reaper, though. I mean, uh, one probe with his Reaper. He does have a kill there. Oh, he's going to let the probe get in? Oh, okay. Never mind. guess the, he wanted to keep the probe, so he didn't want to go in there. He saw the two barracks, which is enough information, really. It's... Kind of a big tell that he's going for that 2 one five-minute timing. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever, like, heard that word before. I've seen it spelled out, but... Aggressive stalker here, taking a lot of damage, though. Yep. Being very annoying with that uh, opening stalker. Oh. Gets one marine, but almost dies itself. Oh. Oh, so close. Reaper going back across the map, hopefully, hoping to try and get some more information. Uh, let's see, back home for the Protoss, we have two more gates going down, a Robo. Might get a probe here. Gets one. Oh, we've also got Blink halfway done. I, unfortunately, John won't be able to see... Oh wait, he's already seen... <laughs> Excuse me, he's already seen the uh, Twilight Council, as well as the Robo. Two medevacs on the way now. He doesn't have vision to blink into the main yet. He's building an immortal. 
And John is just loaded up and he's gonna fly right over these stalkers. Oh no, no. Oh my God. Oh man. Oh my God, that hurts. That has happened to me so many times though. Usually when that happens to me, I just GG and quit. So already John is doing better than me. But he does have a tank. Um, all right. Someone just cheered. Oh, okay. Xenodactyl with the one bit. Thank you very much. That fail fish. Yeah. A little bit of a face palm on that one. And it sucks because he didn't even have his boost. He's got the tank out now. He should be fine. But, um, you know, in the background here, Protoss is macroing up. He's got his third base fully saturated. Up to 55 probes now. Charge has just finished. Back home, he's getting lots of gateways, getting his upgrades. We don't have any upgrades started. Uh, well, plus one attack is just now starting. His second engineering bay is uh, halfway finished. It's going to be an upward battle here for John. But, um, you know, tanks and marauders are very good against uh, stalkers and gateway army. Oh, man, he's going to get caught out of position here. They don't even know about each other's army, I don't think. Neither of them know. So they're about to do, like, a big base trade. The thing about this is that Daydreamer's army supply is, like, 50% more of John's. So... If he can kind of like hold this ramp somehow, maybe a liberator and a tank, but he's supply blocked, so that's gonna be a little hard. And wow, okay, so he just recalled his entire army back home. So there won't be any type of base trade like that. Like they say, you should never uh, base trade with the Terran. So I guess he, you know, decided better of that and just recalled home. Did I do math? I don't know. I, I, hopefully if I did, I got it right. He's got a nice, um, he's got his tank set up here. He's got his bio on top of the ramp, but it might not be enough. <clears throat> there's another tank in the back here, but there's just so much Protoss here. Army supply is almost double. Very grim. This game would have gone so differently had he not lost those two medevacs. It's happened to me so many times before, though. So Daydreamer has his third base back up. He's got pylons all over the map. He's got great map control. Man. So much Protoss here. Blinking right on top of the tanks. I believe we're going to see a GG here momentarily. 
And Daydreamer will take the score up two to zero. All right, now we've got to pull out our diamond because the lineup is three diamond, I mean, three masters, one diamond. So, Okay, Wolf Snoot, thank you very much for the follow. And, okay, there goes the, uh, an, oh, another bit from Xenodactyl, thank you, Mike, thank you very much. Oh, what did I do? I logged into the wrong account or something. so stupid if you log in if you start starcraft from the app it won't ask you for that authentication code but if you like log out while you're in the game then it asks you for it i don't know if that happens to anyone else but I don't know about Brad Pitt, but uh, thank you for the kind words, man. Also, thank you for the five bits. Very much appreciated. What's going on, Lamphir? Thanks for uh, stopping in. Redshift. All right, so the first game we saw a PvP out of Daydreamer, he went for a cannon rush. I wonder if he'll do it the same thing again. Xenodactyl with another four bits. Thank you. Sippy Cup played first, and um, that was a very short game. Daydreamer uh, cannon rushed him, and um, 
Sippy Cup wasn't even able to get a unit out, and he just had to GG because it was pretty much over. Yep. I got faith in Faith, though. I think he can pull it out, man. He says PvP is his best matchup. I played him earlier. He was on fire today. We played a bunch of practice games. He won every single one. Thanks, Shrine, with another five bits. Man, you guys are just flooding in the bits. Thank you so much. All those bits and everything uh, goes back into more team events and more content for the, uh, for the team in the future. So greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. All right, so Redshift in the bottom left-hand corner. We have uh, the the teal Protoss currently up two uh, two points for his team. His name is Daydreamer. And in the top left hand corner, we have the red Protoss from the new contender from Psionic Aftermath. His name is Faith. Whoa. Did you guys see that? I didn't even know you could do that. That's like cheating, man. <laughs> His probe just teleported. Oh, man, that's so sneaky. Man, I've got to check for that now, dude. Yeah, the forge is down. It looks like another cannon rush, and Faith has no idea where this is coming from. This would be the last place I would expect it. So, yeah. Um, Faith is going for the same, was, was going for the same build that um, Sippy Cup went for, except he just now canceled his second barracks. He's getting a Zealot out. That cyber core is awfully close to these cannons. I'm not sure why he canceled the second gateway, though. Maybe just, I don't know. Yeah, Gemini is on side. I think he might be on the lineup for tonight. So we might get to see him play. Oh man, this is not looking good. Stalker's uh, supply blocked. Gonna throw down a Nexus just because he's... Um... So maybe he can transfer the probes. Because he's definitely gonna lose this uh, this base. The Cybercore is definitely gonna go down as well. He'll probably be able to get one Stalker out, but he needs to rebuild another cyber down at his base, at his um, natural, if he wants to uh, continue stalker production. Oh man, and he, what? <laughs> oh man, he's blocking his own ramp. Oh, okay, so he was able to queue up another stalker. Back home, he is uh, going to start building his... Um, his base up. He's got a cyber core finished. Another gateway at home. And um, Nexus goes down. He's got another cyber core on the way. Oh, and a shield battery as well. Man, that's brutal.
So Faith uh, did have a probe across the map. Saw that um, Daydreamer was kind of trying to build up now. Oh, Proxy Robo, he's going to probably try and get some Immortals out. You know, already you gotta you gotta hand it to Faith for sticking in this game and not giving up. Even though he's, you know, um, a lot lower ranked than Daydreamer, he's still giving it his all. And he hasn't quit. So the Robo's done. He's probably going to start an Immortal here shortly. Well, yeah. I mean, his tech is is a little behind. But, I mean, Daydreamer doesn't have too much of his own tech. He's got a Robo. Faith is starting his own Robo. Now uh, Daydreamer is actually outnumbering on the Stalkers. Lightly here. Yeah, I think with this immortal coming in, it should be GG. He's only got one gateway, and it's not even warp gate. All right, Faith, GGs, and that brings Scythe, uh, Scythe to match point. We're going to have to pull out our last player, which is Jeterix. So we're going to be looking at another PvP. Jedrick says he needs uh, just a couple minutes to finish up some food, so just going to be a moment, and we'll get into this fourth game. Again, the uh, score is uh, three to zero. It's a best of seven. So if they win one more game, that means we lose 4-0 and get all killed by Daydreamer. But I've got faith. I think um, I think I think Jedrick can uh, pull something out here. Hey, what's up, Alex? Uh, Alex Anderink, Inky. How you doing, man? Thanks for stopping by in the stream. Yeah, I think Jet can do something here. I've seen him play PvP, and he's pretty good.
Oh, okay, next gaming, right, yeah. I've seen you guys around a lot. What's going on, man? Yeah, no problem, Landfear. Um, I was just bored tonight, and I was like, man, there's nothing going on. Let me try and get a clan war set up. So, kind of a last-minute thing, but Toasty was there. He said, let's do it. Okay, so Jetterix is picking uh, Dreamcatcher to play against Daydreamer. I wonder if that's some sort of like passive aggressive shit talking. <laughs> Jetterix disconnected. Uh oh, we got a host. Oh, I just missed it. Alex, thanks, thanks for the host. All right, we're getting Jet Jet back in here. Xenodactyl with another five bits. Thank you very much. Getting into game number four. So, so far we've seen Daydreamer do cannon rushes in both of those um, PvPs. wonder if he'll do it again. If we'll try it again. Dank Shrine with another five bits, man. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All the bits. Very much appreciated. Right. Let's see. I'm trying to do the score here real quick. All right. So in the bottom, uh, I mean in the top left-hand corner, we have the new player, final ace player coming out from Sionic Aftermath. His name, the Blue Protoss. His name is Jetterix. And in the bottom right-hand corner, if he wins one more game, that's an all kill. The Teal Protoss. His name is Daydreamer. Oh, wow, a show match with GMs, man, that sounds cool, dude. Definitely excited for that. Looks like Jetterix has the uh, tournament win trophy for this season as an ultralisk. Looks pretty, pretty freaking cool. All right, so no, no uh, cannon rush out of uh, Daydreamer this time, and uh, Jetterix going for a two gate. What's going on down here? We've got a pylon. And, uh, oh, oh, is this going to be, oh, DTs? 
That's what it's looking like to me. And a robo, so he's looking to... Um, um, yeah, drop DTs into Jedi. <laughs> I was like, look, trying to think of the of the word there. He's gonna drop uh, DTs into the main base of Jedi, I think. Whoa! But he's what? He scouts it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy! Two adepts outside of the main. Possibly gonna could could do a lot of damage here. Is he gonna shade all the way into the main into the mineral line? There's only one zealot, and that's it. That's all he has for defense here. Stalker is being chrono boosted out. The zealot is about to die. He's definitely gonna lose a lot of probes here. I think two adepts can one shot probes. One adept goes down, but not before losing six or seven probes. The warp prism is out now. The stalker is out as well. Let's see. Uh, he didn't go with the uh, DT shrine yet since he got scouted, I guess. Or possibly wasn't even trying to go for that at all. Wait. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Yeah, dank shrine is in the main base now. And he has two gates, so we'll be seeing two uh, DTs here shortly. The Warp Prism is already outside the base of Jeterix. Um, but he has an Oracle on the way, so... Um, he's got one Stalker, which isn't really enough to deal with DTs. Three Stalkers here to defend against this Oracle. Nice. Oracle gets away without taking too much damage. Warp Prism still out here. I don't think... Uh, yeah, Daydreamer is just trying to defend against this Oracle for now. Oh, the Phoenix is out too, and it sees that Warp Prism. It's going to have to uh, do something. It's going to warp in these DTs. Oracle is right there, though, and so is the Stalkers. Jeddert already has his second Nexus finished. Yeah, Xenodactyl, I wholeheartedly agree. Cheese is a valid strategy in real-time strategy games. Absolutely. Now, I don't think I would. I don't think that uh, all you should do is cheese a hundred percent of the time. I just I cheese a lot of times, but. Um, you know, I try to uh, also macro, and I try to do a lot of different things. Sometimes I try, like, timings. Sometimes I try rushes. Sometimes I try, like, proxy cheeses. Sometimes I go very greedy with, like, three CCs in the first five minutes. But, yeah, definitely cheese is a valid strategy part of the game all right so jetterx is i mean uh daydreamer is trying to do something here but he doesn't really have a whole lot of uh army um extremely outnumbered <coughs> two archons three stalkers versus about like ten eight stalkers eight or ten stalkers and an immortal uh daydreamer trying to get his nexus down but it's so far behind Right now, the supply um, is 70 to 45 in favor of Jeterix. Daydreamer trying to get his own Immortals out, too.
Warp Prism trying to do something here, but there's a Phoenix, so... Okay, he's gonna recall the Warp Prism. And one thing Daydreamer does have is uh, some... Um, a lot of map vision here. He's got a Pylon, Probe, DTs... Scattered around. So he shouldn't really um, get caught unprepared for anything. It's a best of seven. So... This is the match point for Daydreamer if he can pull this out. And then it will be an all kill, but it uh, doesn't look like Jetterix wants to let that happen. He's already got his third base on the way. And um, it was scouted by that pylon. It wasn't ranged, so he knows. You know, what's funny is that uh, Daydreamer is actually almost caught, caught up on supply now. Um, but Jetterix has the tech. He's got his High Templar Archive. He's got Charge on the way. He's got his third Nexus halfway finished. And it looks like Daydreamer is just kind of sitting back, trying to be defensive. Oh, and he's going for a, a uh, hidden uh, ninja base at the gold. What's going on up here? Oh, it's a Warp Prism. With DTs. But there is a cannon there, so with the shield battery. Very good defense right there. His Archon looks crazy. DT's trying to get in where they can to do any damage at all, but... Jetterix is not letting that happen. Yeah, I agree, Zeno. Um, might as well try it. Go for it, you know. Daydreamer's doing what he can, man. He's got pylons all over the place. He's got good map vision. Recalling his probes. Prism uh, just getting around here to the back of the main base. He does have a cannon though. There's no shield battery. So he's going back down here to check or to kill this. But he still has no idea this base is up here. Jetterick's going to be throwing down his fourth nexus. And Jetterix's army is looking pretty scary now. He's got lots of Immortals, lots of Archons. Um, supply, the army supply is 100 to 67. Both, both armies are um, looking pretty similar. All right, so it looks like Jetterix knows about this third base. He wants to put on some pressure now that uh, Jetterix, um, now that Daydreamer is finally trying to move out, out of his uh, two base. The thing about this is that even though Jetterix's army supply is so far ahead, he it's still like he can't really fight up that ramp because it's such a small choke point. Okay, so we've got Daydreamer dropping a bunch of Zealots in the main base. Not bad. I mean, he's in, he's still in the game. He's trying. Oh, is he going to fight down the ramp? No. Jetterix is in full containment mode. He has no idea that this third base is up here, though. Okay. 
Yeah, no idea. And uh, Jetterix is going to be warping in his own zealots up here. Yeah, he's buying some time here. This might be suicide here. Uh, I don't know if that was necessary. Oh, the DTs though. Does he have... Um, he doesn't have an Oracle with his army. He might... Wait. Yeah, he doesn't have an Oracle with his army. I would recall. There he is. There it is, the recall goes down. And there's zealots in the main base as well, going down, uh, killing all these probes. Seven probes have gone down. So the DTs will be able to clean this up. Might want to get that uh, warp prism as well. Another ninja base and a normal base. So. Daydreamer is trying to come back in this game. I mean, the army supply the supply is looking like it's evening out a little bit. I mean, Jetterix is still pretty far ahead, but it was he was 70 ahead and now he's only 40 ahead or 50 ahead, sorry. Yeah, but the army supply is almost double. And it looks like Jetterix wants to end this. More zealots in the main base. Daydreamer is being stretched pretty thin here. He's definitely going to be able to kill... Uh, Jetterix is definitely going to be able to kill all this. His main base is being um, demolished by a bunch of zealots at the same time. Even though Daydreamer had the bases, he could never really catch up on supply. Gateways are being unpowered. And Jetterix just wants to push up and kill him now. And G GG from Daydreamer. So finally, uh, Jetterix getting a point on the board for Psionic Aftermath. Well played by both players. Or well played for both players. Um, so the score is now 3-1. to one. And we'll see who um, Scythe pull, pulls out next for their team. Xenodactyl with another five bits. Thank you very much, man. Trying to see what maps are left here. Pulling out Gemini next. What? Gemini is ignoring me. What? Why? <laughs> yeah, I, I just like to game in the dark. I mean, I like to have all the lights off and, you know, I don't know. Just how I prefer because I can, like, focus all of my attention on the screen. I 
I have no idea why Gemini would ever ignore me, but I guess I've heard of that happening, like people just randomly ignoring other people when they've never even tried or said it to that. pretty much it right there you got it
So there's a little bit of a discrepancy here, but hopefully we can just get this uh, last game or this next game going. Yeah, I've seen your uh I've seen your pictures. I saw you with uh saw your picture with uh someone. I forget who it was actually. Whoa. I could pull it up. Let me see. I have not met any StarCraft fans. I've never even been to a live StarCraft event, but I hope to go sometime in the, in the future. Yeah, I was here in Marine. That's right. Yeah, you posted it in the Discord. All right, so game number five, score is three to one. Sorry about the wait there, uh, but we've got everything figured out. And uh, another PVP, lots of PVPs today. I think we've seen like, I think they've all been PVP except for one PVT, right? You know, I'm not a, I'm not a hater. I, I like to watch PVP. That's really cool, Alex. Um, yeah, I would. I'd be down for that. You guys, you can talk to me on Discord or uh, in in game if you want to um, talk about setting up um, some clan wars or something. Oops. Let me fix everything. Whoa! What just happened? What is that? Do you guys see that? 
What in the world is that? I've never seen that before. I just pressed control tilde. Anyway, sorry. All right, so let's get into this game. In the top right-hand corner, we have the um, the defender from Psionic Aftermath, currently up one point for his team. Red Protoss, his name is Jetterix. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we have the new player coming out of Scythe. The Teal Protoss, his name is Gemini. I think he can, man. He looked to be playing pretty well after the last game. I'm pretty sure Jetterix has been GM before. I don't know if he finished the season or not, but I, I'm pretty sure I've seen him with a GM border. And not to mention Protoss versus Protoss, as volatile as it is. You can die to so much, so many different uh, sneaky things that you'd never see coming. Yeah, I mean, it's not like that big of a uh, skill gap. I mean, we're talking about like within, a, I, I think, just a couple hundred MMR. So it's not really that big of a skill gap. I mean, I beat people with like 300 MMR higher than me and I lose people lose to people with 300 MMR lower than me all the time. <laughs> Just a couple hundred. So, uh, sorry, so let me start casting the game. Um, Jetterix going for a four gate. Interesting. Um, an, 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 um, an illusioned oracle, is that how you say it? Illusioned? Or hallucinated, sorry. Hallucinated oracle. I'm going across the map to scout. He's going to see the four gates. Does Gemini know about these pylons? No. I don't know if he had any idea this was coming at all because he looks pretty unprepared for this. The stalkers are being like two-shotted. This is actually looking pretty good. Oh, but the immortal is out now. Oof, oof, lots of damage. Yeah, it is looking pretty good for Jet. He's going to be able to kill this Nexus, but... There's a mortal at the top of the ramp, so it's going to be really hard to push up into. He's, uh, if I were him, I'd take a, ne a Nexus. Take his Nexus right now. But maybe maybe he can just try and push up this ramp. Who knows? Once the Adepts go up there, yeah, he'll have something to give, give him vision. Lots of these stalkers are being blocked out by the mineral lines and the more stalkers being um, nice. The adepts are getting uh, getting those probes off the mineral lines, so putting a little halt in his um, economy. Oh, and he depowered the uh, the um, the immortal as well. So this is looking pretty good. He's gonna focus down that immortal. Oh man, I think this might be GG. He's down to three stalkers. Wow, so Jetterix, like we said, like we said before, man, Jetterix did it. That's awesome. So now he's gonna play. Uh, <laughs> now he's gonna play Toast. 
And Toast is not feeling very confident because he already said he's going to lose. Xenodactyl with another bit. Man, thank you very much. All right, so let's get Toasty back in here. What's up, Kingslayer? What's going on, man? See you in the chat. Yeah, man, that was awesome because... Um, um, Jetterix knew that he had a ton of stalkers, and so he just, like, ran up <laughs> and, like ran all the way up on top of his army and then just started one-shotting everything. Or actually, I think he was like two-shotting because of that shield battery there. Um, have we been following Copa America? Um, like, just paying attention to it? Um, I tune into the stream sometimes. I, ha I haven't muted because I can't understand Spanish, but... I haven't really been following who's been winning all that much. I just kind of watch it, you know, just to watch the games. Okay, both players are ready. All right, so Taren versus Protoss. Let's see what Toasty goes for. I'm curious because he's a little bit out of his league here, but. All right, score is three to two in favor of Scythe. In the top left-hand corner, we have the blue Protoss. His name is Jetterix. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have the purple Terran. His name is Toasty. So I think this is the only four-player four, four player map in the season, or I mean in the uh, map pool. But um, that actually doesn't even matter anymore because they started... Um, giving you little notifications of where your opponent is with a marker on the map as soon as the game starts. So that's a little useful tool. Because I don't hate the four-player maps. That was the only part about four-player maps I didn't like, was that you don't know where your opponent is. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the times 
games that ended up very short came down to just luck of who got scouted first. Wasn't really a lot to do, didn't have a lot to do with uh, skill. But I don't know if Toasty actually noticed or knows about that because he's scouting in the wrong direction. Yeah, but I think the one that your opponent is 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 at is uh, like it stays lit for a little bit longer. I could be wrong. I don't know. I thought that's. I don't. I don't even think I've played this map yet. And it's been. They didn't have any four-player maps in the last season, so I kind of forget. But I thought they did a little notification for where your opponent is. I could be wrong. Anyway, Jedrix going for a um, Nexus Gateway Expand. And back home for Toasty, he's getting his, uh, his factory up. He's got two barracks and a factory. Two refineries. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right, all right. Okay, there, so there's no indicator for his spawn location. All right, so I guess I still hate four-player maps then. They should definitely do that. Reaper, kill, uh, Reaper comes in but doesn't uh, get a kill. There's two adepts out. Going for a cyclone and marines. Now this is a very scary force, very scary army composition for a Protoss to deal with in the early game. Marines and Cyclones can be hard to deal with. But uh, it's kind of a long rush distance. It's a pretty large map. Oh, but he does have a proxy Stargate as well. He's going for a Liberator, so this is interesting. He's going to be um, trying to kill probes at the mineral line of the main while also hitting the front. Uh, Jedrix is now getting his three warp gates up and running, though. He should be able to warp in a stalker to deal with the Liberator once that comes. And he's got an Immortal, too, so I think he's going to be totally fine here. Wow, the overlay's been up this whole time. Man, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like really bad with that. Okay. Sorry about that. I've actually, I haven't done it. I think that was the first time I forgot about it this whole night. But like every other stream I've done, I like forget the overlay every single game. But anyway, yeah, Toasty. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jetterix just had the perfect answer for that. And uh, Toasty did not have um, a a natural, so I mean, he uh, he invested a lot into that, and it was shut down. So all right. Dactyl with another bit says another jet win. Yep. So the score is three to three now. And um, it's match point. So whoever wins this will take the the um, the clan war. Um. Yeah, Jetterix has actually been able to bring it back so far.
I'm sorry, I just missed another bit from um, Zeno. Uh, dropping pennies in the stream for good luck. That's how it works, right? Yeah, just like a washing fountain. You know, you throw throw coins in the in the fountain and you make a wish. You uh, cheer pennies at a stream and you wish for your teammate to win. This is exactly how it works. Let me go ahead and get the uh, overlay now. All right, final game. Score is three to three. Best of seven. It's all come down to this. <laughs> Lampier says, yeah, make it rain. <laughs> all right. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have the new player coming out of Scythe Esports. The Orange Terran, his name is Groovy Man. And in the top left hand corner, we have the Blue Protoss on his way for a reverse all kill. If he can pull it off, his name is Jetterix. Got the gateway here to block off any Reapers. Uh, another five bits coming from Really Not Loki. He says, Jet Imba, please nerf. I agree with that. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know why it didn't pop up on the screen. I have a problem with that where it pops up on one scene and then it doesn't pop up on the other. So I'll have to look at that before the next stream but um, yeah thank you for the bits so um, Jetterix going for a one gate expand again and there goes his cyber core and uh, groovy man going for a reaper expand I know that I watched groovy stream a lot I know he likes to go for bio Sneaky beaky little probe here trying to go around. Possibly drop a pylon or something. Reaper coming out now. And the probe gets right into the main base of Terran. He sees the, uh, t the the barracks in the factory. So Groovy Man has his own tournament. We've got two tournament champions here. One thing I wish, I think it used to show a little league, league icon of which tournament you won right on the trophy. But they stopped doing that. I don't know why. I wish they did that. Two gateways on the way, going up to three gateways. He's got his robo and his blink on the way. Back home, Groovy Man's going for it looks like a marine tank type of style. He's got a couple of widow mines out. Reaper here. Um scouting for a third.
All right, Groovy Man's got a medevac full with uh, one widow mine and six marines. Oh, and he's even got a widow mine over here, but he's gonna reveal it to this probe. All right, he's gonna drop in the main, try and kill this pylon. He's gonna kill one stalker, damages two others with that widow mine, gets the pylon. Oh, oh no. Doesn't even get the medevac. And has lost a lot of stalkers here. And is losing more probes now. Gets the medevac though. Wow, this is this is doing a lot more than I ever imagined it could. Six marines and a widow mine and a medevac did so much damage right there. Seven probes gone down. He killed like five stalkers. And the pylon to delay blink. He has a liberator going all across the map um, to uh, harass the mineral line at the natural. And he's going to fly over this third base, so he's going to know exactly the timing on that third. Liberator gets out with only a few hit points. But uh, Jetterx is not doing, he's not too far behind. I mean, he's got his third all, already finished. Groovy Man is starting his third now. What's all this? Five more gateways on the way. Going to go for a uh, very gateway heavy army. <laughs> you guys. Yeah, you guys are pulling out the, um, the puns. So that's some tastosis level puns right there. Wow, my mouth, my mouse is going a little crazy. Sorry about that. Groovy is uh, moving across the map. He's got stim and two tanks. This is a scary push. And uh, yeah. He does have blink, so he's gonna. It's gonna be tough, but he could work some magic here with the micro. I think he might be able to save this third. I mean, he's got some. He's got a decent amount of uh, units here. Blinks on top of the tanks, and the zealots are doing work on the bio. So yeah, pretty good defense there. Very nice. Jetterix uh, still has a lot of army left over. Even these two stalkers down here. Very nice um, oracles set up in that siege mode. Gets a lot of map control with that. And it looks like um, Jetterix wants to do a counter, but he can't. Okay, so he sees that the tank is there. And uh, he blinks away. He's got three oracles, four oracles. That's one thing you gotta hand it hand to him, man. He does have a lot of uh, map control. He does like to know what's going on, and uh, he's just harassing the gas and blinking away. He's gonna recall his stalkers, and Jedrick's going down for a fourth base. I mean, this this is uh, a. This game is looking pretty even despite how much damage Jetterix took in the beginning. Oh wait, what? 
Oracle? I mean, Observer. <laughs> I've, done, I've made that mistake before. Yeah, it's an Observer. Sorry about that. <laughs> like, Observer's, like, they remind me of, like, an Oracle, because an Oracle is, like, someone that sees or something, right? I don't know. Okay, so Jedrix wants to go up to five bases now. Yeah. There you go. That's 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 the reason that I got them mixed up. Groovy Man going and moving out with his army, but it's right underneath this observer. So Jedrix knows exactly what's going on. There is a serious lack of tech here, though. It's a lot of charge lots, which is pretty decent. But I don't know if it's enough. All right, he's definitely going to have to give up this fifth. I think it was a little greedy anyway. I mean, he's not losing too much here. That poor observer. Oh, are you saying that the observers like evolve into oracles just like a like a Pokemon or something? <laughs> Looks like Groovy Man needs to pause for a moment. Oh yeah, I think that is true. So it's like... Yeah, I guess the Protoss units evolve. This bio is looking pretty um, low health. He might be able to clean this up eventually, but it's just not the best way to do it. Not very cost efficient. He really needs some sort of uh, splash tech. Feel like he's just losing the battle of attrition here. He's barely holding on, barely holding on, but eventually it's just kind of snowballing. There's not even any signs of any type of splash tech. He's just staying on charge lot and gateway units. Hey, what's up, Sagan? Thank you for uh, thanks for checking out the stream. Xenodactyl with another uh, not like this bit cheer. But hey, man, you got to hand it to Jetterix. He almost did the reverse all kill. He had a lot of work ahead of him, and he got through most of it. But in the end, Scythe Esports will take the clan war. So good game and good games, and well played to them. Um, and that's it for tonight. Um, <clears throat> but uh, thank you all. Thanks for all the viewers for step uh, for checking out the stream. Uh, if you have not already, please follow the stream. We bring tons of content to this channel. Um, let's see, we've got uh, something planned uh, this Friday. 
And uh, we've got tons of stuff this weekend. We've got like four or five things going on this weekend. So uh, if you do want to, please follow the stream. Thank you, Sagan, for the follow. And you guys can keep up to date with all the stuff that we do. So, again, good games. Well played to Side Esports. Thanks. Thank you to all the viewers. And have a good night, guys. Bye-bye.